Producing instant replay for live production is an art, and the three play allows you much more creativity with what you send out as a replay than most other systems. The basics of instant replay are really about quickly and easily being able to do three things, mark it, cue it, and play it. Before starting a replay session, you should think about the type of live action you will be trying to capture and replay. Evaluate each event. Define sports categories. Sports with a definable start and stop replay opportunity, like American football. Or continuous action sports, where the magic moment in time reveals itself when it happens and it's not always predictable, like soccer and basketball. Some sports share aspects of both like baseball, and there are also finish line type sports like track and racing. The type of action that you're trying to capture will determine the preferred workflow. Now, one way to mark an event is to mark an in and an out point, and this is a traditional workflow for creating clips for playback. It works well for sports that have a predictable start and stop point for the action, such as American football. The in and out points that are marked during an event are pointers that are pointing in time to a master recording. Everything from all angles is always recorded when you are in the recording mode. Start the recording process before the game starts. This can be done by clicking on the record button in the interface or by hitting the record button on the CS. If you don't start recording and hit the in button, the recording will start automatically, but it is best to start recording before the event begins to catch any of the pregame stuff and to be sure that you're recording as the event starts and not just when you mark your first in point. Once recording, the three play records everything from all inputs. Even if you don't mark an in or an out point, the content will be there and you can go back and retrieve it and make new events at any time. Every camera angle for the whole game is recorded. Let's get live video playing through output B. Hit the B button to select this as the current output. Hit the live button to enter the live mode. Look at the live feeds and pick an angle to work with to create your event. You can look at all the live camera angles on the multi-viewer, or you can look at them on output by using the angle button and the number pad on the control surface to choose an angle. You can also see the live feeds on the secondary multi-viewer, and this viewer can be configured in a number of layouts. Hit the in button at the start of the action. If you hit the in button at the wrong time before the action starts, you can reset the in point at any time by hitting the in button again. Notice this creates an event entry in the clip list. The event consists of all camera angles that were being recorded as inputs. Notice that the in button is blue and will remain blue until this event is completed. At the end of the action, hit the out button. This completes the event with an out point and a duration. To cue this clip up for playback, hit the clip list button and make sure that the T-bar on the control surface is at zero by pulling it all the way towards you. The camera input you were viewing during the event creation is now selected as the camera angle for event playback. If you wish to select a different angle, hold down the angle button and use the number pad on the CS to select an angle or use the mouse and single click on any camera angle. You can also use the arrow keys on the CS to go to the next and previous angles. Once you select an angle you can use, take the jog wheel and reselect the endpoint if you wish. Changing an endpoint in the clip list adjusts the endpoint for every camera angle in that event. Use the jog wheel to jog the clip. You can use the fast jog button to increase the speed at which the wheel transports the video stream, making it move eight times faster. Now, if you spin the wheel to the left, you will eventually hit the marked endpoint and the clip will stop. It is possible to move back beyond the marked endpoint. Hold down the shift key and continue turning the wheel to the left. When the new endpoint is reached, 
Continue to hold down the shift button and hit the in button. This will set a new endpoint and the clip is queued. With your camera angle selected, ramp up the T-bar. If the T-bar is already up, then pull it down to zero to set it to play. Now pushing it up will initiate the playback. That's it. Mark it, cue it, play it. You do have an option to have the clip play beyond the out point for a specific period or forever. This is recommended as you never know when the director will want to hang on a shot. This is done by using the options menu and selecting out point padding. Set this to infinite and it will allow the clip to never stop playing until you stop it. You could also set it to play for a certain amount of time after the out point or to stop directly on the out point if you disable it. 